In the previous video, I introduced you to the work kinetic energy theorem. In this video, we're going to do our first example problem using the work kinetic energy theorem. To guide us through applying the work kinetic energy theorem, we're going to be using this handout here, procedure four. This is available in the module introduction. <clears throat> okay, so let's look at the problem. We have a mass, which starts out with some initial speed, which is given here. The mass is dragged through a distance of seven meters along a frictional horizontal surface by a rope, which is held at a constant angle 20 degrees above the horizontal. We are given the tension in the rope, and we would like to find the final speed of the mass. So let's go to the handout and see what it tells us to do. First step is to draw two pictures one illustrating the initial situation and one illustrating the final situation. Um, so we already have a figure, but we're going to start by drawing a clean figure, which illustrates what's going on here. So I start by drawing the mass over here, that's the initial position, and then draw the mass over here, that's the final position. And then having drawn the mass at the initial position and final position, I can connect them using the displacement vector. Okay, so this was actually step two to draw in the displacement vector. So I'm going to be following this sheet a little bit out of order. Anyways, let's go back to step one. Step one says at the initial situation, draw in all forces acting on the object of interest. Okay, so basically what's going to happen is that we're going to go to the initial situation here and draw in a force diagram as usual. So at this point, you can pause the video and do your best to draw in your own force diagram for the mass in this initial situation. All right, so we're going to draw the force diagram as usual. We start by drawing a dashed line around the object. We then draw in as our first force vector, the gravitational force. I'll put in magnitude mg. And then once we've drawn in the gravitational force, we can identify all the other forces by going around the dashed line to see what's reaching in through the dashed line to touch the mass. So up here, we see the string reaching in through the dashed line. So I put in a tension force, magnitude T. And then as you follow the dash line around, you see the other thing reaching in through the dash line to touch the mass is the floor. And in this problem, the floor is going to be exerting both a normal force and a frictional force. So I'll put in the normal force first. And then we have the kinetic frictional force opposing the rightward motion of the mass. The magnitude would be mu k n. Okay, so that's, so there we did steps one and two together. Now we go to step three, which is to separately compute the work done on the object of interest by each force acting on it, uh, you may skip forces which do no work. Before proceeding to calculate the work done by the various forces, let's recall the formula for computing work. So if we have a mass which goes through a displacement D while acted on by a force F, and there is an angle theta between the force vector and the displacement vector, the work done by the force equals the magnitude of the force times the displacement times the cosine of the angle between the force vector and the displacement vector. Now we've seen before that if there is a 90 degree angle between the force vector and the displacement vector, we then get cosine of 90 here, cosine of 90 is zero. So any force which is perpendicular to the displacement does a work of zero. So if we look at this figure, we can see right off the bat that the normal force and the gravitational force are perpendicular to the displacement vector. So we can say right off the bat that the work done by the normal force is zero and the work done by the gravitational force is zero.
So next, let's calculate the work done by the tension force. And here, I would like for you to give this a shot. So try on your own to calculate the work done by the tension force. Try and take this as far as getting a numerical value with units of joules. And once you've given that a shot, then rejoin the video. Okay, so we're gonna use this formula to calculate the work done by tension. So we have magnitude of the tension force, magnitude of the displacement vector, cosine of the angle between the two. Now, referring to this picture here, we can see that the angle between the tension force and the displacement is 20 degrees. So I'm just gonna put in 20 degrees here and then substituting these magnitudes, magnitude of tension force is given by 50 newtons. The displacement is given as seven meters and cosine 20. All right, so substituting all of this into your calculator, you will get a numerical value of 329 and then recognize that Newton times meter is joules. Okay, so we have work done by normal force, work done by gravitational force, work done by tension. Now we need to find the work done by the frictional force. And notice that in order to calculate the frictional force, we're going to need the strength of the normal force. And how are we going to get the strength of the normal force? To get the strength of the normal force, we're gonna to have to apply Newton's second law along the vertical direction here. So this is actually going to take us back to uh, Newton's second law of motion before we are able to actually complete our problem using the work kinetic energy theorem. So in order to do this, I'm going to introduce coordinate axes. So we're going to have x-axis, y-axis, and we're gonna do a force balance along the y direction in order to find the strength of the normal force. So I would encourage you to pause the video here and apply Newton's second law along the y direction to try and find the magnitude of the normal force. At this point in the course, I'm assuming that you have plenty of practice with drawing the grids and so forth. So I'm going to do a version of this, which is a little bit abbreviated. I'm just going to say sum of y components of forces equals mass times y component of acceleration. Now there's no acceleration in the y direction. All of the motion is in the x direction. So the y component of the acceleration is zero. So this becomes sum of y components of forces equals zero. All right, so now we're going to add up the y component of the different forces. And I said, because we've already had lots of practice with this, I'm going to skip the grid step and just write out the different y components. So the normal force points in the plus y direction, so its y component is just plus its magnitude, so plus n. The tension force makes a 20 degree angle with the horizontal, so the y component will turn out to be t sine 20. The gravitational force points in the minus y direction, so the y component is minus mg. That's all equal to zero. So here we can solve for the normal force. Normal force equals mg minus t sine 20. So substitute, we have 10 kilograms, g 9.8 meters per second squared, minus, I'll go to the next line, 50 newtons times sine 20. This gives me for the normal force, 80.9 newtons. Okay, so now that we have this, we can calculate the work done by the frictional force. So I will write down the formula for work. In this case, it is the work done by friction. That will be equal to magnitude of the frictional force times magnitude of the displacement vector, and then the cosine of the angle between the frictional force and the displacement. And you notice that the frictional force vector here and the displacement vector here are exactly opposite each other. 
So the angle between these two vectors is 180 degrees. So I'm going to put in here cosine of 180. Cosine of 180 is minus one. The magnitude of the kinetic friction force is mu k n. So the work done by friction, all of this reduces to coefficient of kinetic friction times magnitude of normal force times magnitude of displacement times minus one. Let's go to the substitution now. So we get then that the work done by friction is mu k over here, 0 0.30. Magnitude of normal force, whoops, 80.9 newtons. Magnitude of displacement, 7 meters. And then minus 1. I get minus 170. Point zero joules. All right, so we have now we have now done step three on the handout, which is to separately compute the work done on the object of interest by each force acting on it. Now we're going to step four, which is to plug into the work kinetic energy theorem. So I'll copy the work kinetic energy theorem here. It is one half mass times final speed squared minus one half mass times initial speed squared equals total work done by all forces acting on the object. So let's solve for the final speed. I'm going to take this initial kinetic energy term and move it to the right where it picks up a plus sign. So I have one half mass times final speed squared equals total work done by all forces plus one half mass times initial speed squared. Okay, so over here, we want to isolate V final. So I'm going to multiply through the equation by two over the mass. Okay. Now, when I multiply the equation through by two over the mass, and over here on the left, two over M and M over two cancel. So I just get V final squared. Over here, I get two times the total work done by all forces over the mass. And then in this term as well, two over M and M over two cancel. So I get plus initial speed squared. Okay, so now I take the square root of both sides. So final speed equals two times total work done by all forces, all of that over the mass, then plus initial speed squared and then square root. Okay, now I can do my substitution. So I have V final equals two. Now the total work done by all forces, let's add these together. That's going to be 329 joules minus 170 joules. All of that is divided by the mass, which is 10 kilograms. Then plus V initial squared, so three meters per second squared, and then all of that square root. When you put all of this into your calculator, your calculator is probably going to spit out 6.4 as the numerical value. But let's check and make sure that we have an appropriate unit for a velocity. Now, if you look at this term over here, this is meters per second, but that whole term is squared. So the unit of this term here would be meters squared over second squared. Now, what about here where we have joules over kilograms? Is that also meters squared over second squared? I'll do that off to the side here. So joules over kilograms. Let's recall that a joule is a kilogram times meters squared over second squared. That's all over kilograms. So, in fact, this has units of meter squared over second squared as well. So both terms inside the square root have units of meter squared over second squared, but then we take the square root. So we then get meters per second as our unit, as we would expect for a speed. 
All right, so now we have done our first example problem using the work kinetic energy theorem, and in the next video, there will be one more.